energy focus for the week. Come on in and join me. Take a few moments. Focus your energy and align with the cosmos for the week ahead. Come on in and join me. Take a few minutes tonight. Sunday night once again. Here we are. Very end of the month. Come on in and join me. Terry Ann Hyman. This is my live stream for the Empowered Spirit Show. So welcome, welcome every Sunday night. Most Sunday nights. Come join me. Lots going on this week. A lot of shifts happening. Definitely will open up and share this energy, align, and really balance for the week ahead. As I go to start, as this catches up with the broadcast, as it catches up on the live stream, I'm here on Facebook and Instagram, so welcome everyone. Welcome, welcome. And if you can, share this out for me. Someone may be in need of some extra help this evening, aligning their energies as we open up with so much going on in the world. So I did want to share, I found out tonight, that the fourth Grand Master of the Reiki tradition, the Yasui Shihiki Rahoyo, Phyllis Lee Furumoto, has passed, has passed over, gone on to the spirit world. And so I just wanted to start with that acknowledgement. She was really an amazing woman. She really did not want the responsibility of this lineage, but it was given to her by her, her grandmother, Mrs. Takata. And at first she rejected it. And then she carried it on as a, way, as a way of really just honoring the system and all that she had learned with it. As we all know, life is never forever, and we all have lessons to learn and things to go through, and this was her path. She was very creative, and she very much shared her way of carrying on the Reiki lineage. You can find her work with Rachel, too, Rachel Goldberg, who helped her to get these broadcasts out. They're on YouTube's Global Reiki Webinars or through Rachel Goldberg, either way. But she does share the lineage. And if you studied with me, this is your lineage. These are your teachers. Very important that we know our teachers and we know where we come from in terms of the history and the work that we do with Reiki. So I would like to just take a moment as I share this out, as I open up to this evening, just take a moment of silence for her, for this work, especially if you do energy work, and just send a little bit of love and light to her soul as it transitions out into the world. We pass on this energy as we carry this lineage and continue to teach it. We're sending love and light out to her, her family, to those that come before her, and to those that will come after. With gratitude, with light, she was a creative soul. She accepted all the growth. May we all continue to do so. And so it is, sending love and Reiki light out into the world for her and all of us. Honor to carry it on. And so with that, I just kind of offer tonight the energy of just for today. So we take this moment of silence and pull our energy in just for today. Feeling your presence right now, offering gratitude for your life, gratitude for this month that we're finishing, gratitude for the season ahead, just really feeling grateful, being in that moment, carrying on the Reiki principles just for today, being grateful for your life, being honest in your work and in your soul, honoring all people, letting go of the worry. Letting go of that excess amount of anger you may carry just for today. So as we call in our energy, we bring that forward. Say open up. So how are you tonight? What is going on for you? Boy, do we have a big shift in weather around here. Back to sweaters. Shift in energy, same thing. It really mirrors. Nature mirrors everything we do. When we take that time to sit on the earth, to be with it, we can really feel where we are in our path. I know for myself, going through so many changes, so many shifts. So lots comes up when we do that. So this week, as we go through the week, we're going to start with a little bit of that um, 
not feeling like you can get much done, maybe a little frustration. You may even go into a little bit of fantasy or dream time. We're at the very end of that Mercury retrograde. It's moving out, but we're also coming into dark of the moon. So dark of the moon is those couple of days right before the new moon. So Wednesday, Thursday, we're going to feel a little bit of that darkness, which pulls us within. All right, when that darkness comes around, we'll pull us within to sometimes feel more of the shadow sides because of the moon is lessening in light, right? And it's in Pisces. So we have a little bit more of that Pisces energy before we get out of the month and get out of the week. We'll get in a little bit more of that energy of Pisces. So that Pisces causes us to go deeper. It asks us to ask the questions. What am I doing? What is my soul work? Where's my contract with myself? So it's a good time to do that. But don't get too down. Don't let yourself go too far down that road, that, that path where you can't lift your energy up. So that's what we need to remember as we go into the week. As you move into, you know, we'll feel that Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday. Let me start over. Monday, Tuesday, we're going to be a little bit more dreamy and not feel like getting anything done. Wednesday, Thursday is when we have the dark of the moon. And by Friday, that's the new moon. And that's when we really open up to that Aries energy. That's when that all that energy for spring and fire is going to finally finally start to feel it move forward so you may feel some of that anticipation as you go to start your week but bring that energy forward slow down take it easy make your list know that this energy is moving forward all right know that this is a time that by we get to friday and saturday even you're going to feel the energy pushing you forward you're going to feel that fire energy and that's what aries is about aries carries that warrior energy it carries that fire energy really helping us to understand our path so as we move into this energy, out of that dark of the moon, into the new moon, that that Aries energy, that element of fire is really asking you to look at like, where are your hurdles? Where are the struggles? What are those mountains you need to get over and understand? And that's kind of the emphasis that starts out with this spring energy. All right, we're going to definitely see that as we move into it. So it's really been pulling us with Pisces around. It's really been pulling us to really look into that deeper part of who we are and what our purpose is. And those are some of the questions that it's going to ask us to do as we move through this next week. All right. We're also going to um, notice that as you move through the seasonal changes and as you move through the shifts, I know this is one of the things I'm working through, is feeling a little bit uncomfortable like pushing beyond your limits. And that's a great time at this start of the season. Like this is the best time to really get out and do that. And know when you feel uncomfortable, it's okay. All right, this is different. You know, the ego, the body gets so used to our old way of habits, right, of doing things, even if we know we need to change, even if it isn't the healthiest, we get comfortable. So when we can open up and use some of this fire energy in a healthy way, we can push through those struggles, push through that feeling of comfortable. And even for me, it's like fear. It shows up as fear. So yeah, I do a lot of tapping. I know I'm afraid. I know it is, but just know this is in my gut. I can trust my instincts because intuition is used for that, used for gut instincts, used for making decisions. So yeah, you may have to do a little bit of sitting, a little bit of laying on the earth to go, what is it? Is this a good choice for me? And then you just listen and then you just hear and it will be there for you. But we do have to get quiet. And this is the energy coming up, especially these next several weeks, really through the airy seasons, which is a month, that first month of spring. All right. And with fire, had a fire last night going. It's absolutely beautiful. Gosh, seeing the sparks. But there's always a temperance of elements, right? Too much wind and it gets crazy. Not enough and it can die. So where is that for you? So there is a little bit of that earth energy coming in with the fire of Aries that we do need to be centered and we do need to be grounded so we can harness it, so we can move it forward and open up to those intentions for ourselves. Because as we know, new moon, we set intentions, right? So as we move out this week, move out any leftover retrograde, any of that leftover dreaming time, bring it forward and set new intentions. As you balance your energy with the season, then that's when we want to set new tensions. Always write them down. We do that on Friday as the energy comes around. And sometimes, too, you may be creating those same intentions. That's okay. Just renew them. Write them down one more time. It will feel good to really go back. I went back recently to a list I had made and was really amazed at things that came forward. And some things were not exactly right, but there was an indication of a similar energy. All right, so sometimes we can't get exactly the thing, but if we look to the energy of what we want, we know these things are coming forward. So spring, as we know, direction of the east, new seeds, new beginnings, Aries is coming in full force. All that old Mercury energy is going away, and we're going to be building this energy all the way up and through to that April 20th, that new moon, that full moon coming in. So now's the time to really renew those intentions as we move into the end of the week. All right, so just to review, Monday and Tuesday, we're going to feel a little bit, again, dreamy, 
procrastination, don't want to get anything done. We may see a dip up in our energy on Wednesday, Thursday. Friday, we're going to feel that release, that fire come forward. And even Saturday is a good day for getting things done. If you have to work, you can get some stuff done on Saturday. So that's the energy going on. We use the energy of the moon to help us move forward, looking at the hurdles in our life. Don't let fear get in your way. Really, just don't let it get in your way. Tap, run, exercise, do something. Again, I love to tap. And really just recognize what's under the fear. Because then that's when we can open up to it. And that's when it becomes power for us. When we know what we're afraid of and can face it and move forward. Be honest, I've been using an essential oil called Brave and also my Carnelian. Love Carnelian. It's a great stone. It's a great stone for helping you bring forward your passions and desires while feeling the earth and being protected. For me, that's really important. So I offer that for you too. Wear it, carry it, whatever it is for you. As you go about doing these new things that you want to do, really important that we offer and have ways to do that. All right. So finding the tools, that's why we meditate. That's why we journal so that we can recognize those emotions and those feelings. So yes, this week is going to feel a little sluggish to start, but we're going to find the power and the fire to move forward. All right. So let's just take a moment and center our energy wherever you are, if you can. Just take a nice deep inhale. Feel the sound bowls coming in. Exhale away, closing the eyes. Inhaling, bringing that breath up from the earth. And as you exhale, just call back all your energy. Call it back. Feeling it coming right into the center. Feel the feet flat on the floor, grounding those feet. Feel that connection with Mother Earth. Feeling the spiritual body aligning right on top of this, the physical body, shoulders and shoulders, hips and hips. Calling in your higher self, the wise old self. As we open up, calling in our masters, our teachers, the archangels and our own spirit guides. Asking them to work with us and through us to surround us and protect us as we offer this work. Offering that gratitude, aligning with the directions, anchoring them in. This brand new season in the direction of the east. We honor the east for new beginnings. The south, the west, and the north. Above us, below us. Pulling in right into the very center. Pulling you in your spirit. As you open up to this week that is ahead of you. And just taking a deep inhale. Let the breath open up. Let it exhale down. Feeling that idea just for today. Continue the breath up the body. Exhale back down. Just for today, in this very moment, having all you need, being safe, being protected. Continue the breath up the body. And exhale down. Let that be your mantra, just for today. I have all that I need. Feeling that gratitude rise up. Inhaling. And exhaling. Just for today. And should any fear come your way at this moment, imagine it turning a bright red. And we'll just allow the healing guides to come in and let that red be transformed. Let it go. Releasing out anything at all. As you bring your awareness into the just for today. Being very present with yourself. Another deep breath in and exhale out. Feeling that connection with the earth. Opening the eyes. Feeling that shift coming back. So we take that presence energy. It feels good, right? To calm down, to feel in alignment as we look to the cards and see what the cards have come forward for all of us, all of us this week. So the card for all, if you didn't choose, pick one, one, two, or three, wild unknown. All right. I'll be teaching a wild unknown. We've had a few people sign up. We need a few more to keep the class going. So the first card for all of us this week is a major arcana and actually is aligned with the meditation right now, the Empress. So the Empress is like the mother of the tarot. She's the one that nurtures and gives and gives. She's connected to the earth. All right. She's got this beautiful halo. That's like all that red. Move it out. She has the knowledge of the world. She has the mystery schools within her. 
She knows how to shine her light. Her vibrant aura surrounds her. The moon is there. So this reminds us the mystery schools, the intuition, the being quiet, the going deep in ourselves is really important as we move through this week. It really is trusting we know what we are and who we are and what we are doing. Trusting we're on a path. We don't have every single answers, but we can still know we're okay, no matter what. All right? Dig into the earth. Feel the roots. Feel this grow. Feel the outer edges of your aura as you move through this week. Be that mother of the tarot. Be that mother of nurturing yourself and just offer love to all around as well. So if you chose one, two, or three, all right, if you chose number one, love this, New Beginnings, Ace of Pentacles. Love this. Look at that bullseye in there. This is all about new beginnings, new spring energy. What can you set forward? This is in the physical plane. So a great, great alignment. All right, set something new. In fact, I was reading today, it's like instead of focusing on what you don't have and getting all afraid when you start something new or focusing on the unknown, I should say, focus on those new ideas. Focus on what it is that brings you that passion and joy and now's the time to do this. Put it into the physical world. I love it. And that's going to help you be the master of your energy as well. If you chose card number two, this is the Daughter of Cups. So this brings in some of the emotional energy. It's a swan. It's got the rainbows in her reflection. I love that. This is all about creative energy. Being of the heart, being of emotions, being of intuition, being of that intuitive nature. Bringing forward that energy, being really creative and having fun as you move through this week. When we focus on that creative energy, when we focus on the why, it helps us get out of the fear. I know it does for me. So if you chose this card, this is going to help you to align to the mystery schools for your life, for your knowledge, and be very creative and artistic this week as you move through it. And then if you chose card number three, the mother. We got a mother here, mother of swords. All right, this is that energy that helps you to be very precise and practical. All right, this is the energy that helps you know with details. Now, this card can also indicate someone who's going through some hard times, some struggle, all right, and sometimes we can get a little too picky when this energy comes up, all right? So if you are struggling a little bit, careful that you don't get too picky with every detail in your life, all right? Lift up, stay strong, and know that those details can help you have that. Look how proud she is sitting there. So this is a good card to do that with, and this too will help you return to the mystical teachings that can help you move through too, all right? So for all of us, again, be strong in your energy, know the earth, get outside, feel your aura, be the mother for nurturing yourself and those around you. Start something new in the physical world. New beginnings are coming. Spring is here. Yay. New moon Friday. Great card for all of us for this week. And then be creative. Be creative. Be young. Be fresh. Be artistic in your emotions and your world of art and how you express yourself in your world. And then be detailed. Be practical. All right. Just don't get too critical. All right. Sit there. Know. Know that you have the details that you need in your life. And be able to understand them as well, to be in that place of being the empress. I love it. All right, take a deep inhale. If you have questions, post below. If you'd like a card reading for you, let me know. Too good. All right, hello, Cindy. Hello. Hello, everybody on Instagram as well as Facebook. Thanks for joining me. So I have to say, I did not get my podcast out this week. I didn't. I just had so much going on, and sometimes we just have to give ourselves some slack, right, with all that I have going on. But it was so good. I interviewed Lee McCormick from the Integrative Center in Nashville. It was so amazing. The interview went deep from his heart-centered recovery, the heart reconnection book. I'll show you his book since I'm live because it'll come out this week. Brand new book on how he works. It's not just for recovery, but how he works in recovery centers. He talks about the medicine wheel in here. He talks about tools and techniques for really getting into recovering your spirit. Beautiful. It was such a great interview. I didn't want to rush it. I really didn't. I didn't want to rush it. We had some technical difficulties, which required a little bit of, of extra creativity there. But a great book and a great interview. It will be out Saturday. So if you didn't have a chance, catch up on the other podcast. I will definitely be posting this one on Saturday. Definitely an article of two coming out of it. Such a great interview. And also, too, if you're local, we have uh, The Wild Unknown. If you want to learn how to read these cards for yourself, Tarot takes a while, but you got to start somewhere. This Saturday at Beacon Yoga. Oh, and Bailey had her baby. Congratulations to Bailey. Natural childbirth at home, in the water. Beautiful. Bailey, lots of love to you. Congratulations. And I will be there at Beacon Yoga teaching The Wild Unknown. It's this Saturday. Check it out. You can find more information 
and the link in the bio or online. Either way, come join us. We have a couple of people signed up. We need a few more to get the class going. All right. And then Wednesdays, I'm at Birmingham Yoga, Restorative Reiki. We're doing rest- Reiki at 530. And the Restorative Series is Ayurvedic and Spring Clan. So come join us. Even if you didn't sign for the whole thing, you can drop in. So that's what's going on in my world. How about you guys? Who has a question? All right. Cindy, Kimberly, Cindy, and then Mindy over here. And then we'll see. come back to um, Instagram and see where we are as well. All right. So the order here is Kimberly. Hey, Kimberly. Come join us for that tarot class, Kimberly, Cindy, and then Mindy. All right. Here we go. So, Kimberly, this card is for you. This is the Father of Swords. And we got this last week, I feel like. So the Father of Swords is a master of his word as well. Master of details, too. Look how it changed into that rainbow. So be very fixed, very strong in your word. Okay, again, I always like to caution about getting too picky with the details. But this is someone that's very masterful. Look at the rainbow of that sword. So that's a thought. That's of being sharp and precise, okay? See how much you can sharpen up your mind this week. Really good. Not critical. Sharp. All right, Cindy. Cindy, we got the Wheel of Fortune. But it was reversed, all right? So the Wheel of Fortune always reminds us that the wheel is always turning. So sometimes it's like, you know, when you feel like you're on the bottom. And because it's reversed, maybe you're feeling a little bit like, when is all this going to shift? Be grateful. Again, we offer gratitude because it will turn. All right? It will turn. Even when you're on the top, be grateful because it will turn as well. All right? And we don't want to have to do that. We really don't. We don't want to have to do that. All right? So, well, it always turns. So, sorry, I get distracted. But... Cindy, when this card came up for you, it's like, know and be grateful that things are changing always and there is energy coming around. The universe is there to support you. All right. Very good card. I always love it. All right. Mindy. Got a text right in the middle of everything, you know. All right. Mindy. We got the Ace of Cups and New Beginning too. And this one is of love. So I always start the Ace of Cups with first and foremost, a renewed interest in your own love of self. Once we love ourselves, and that can open up to everything around you, and maybe even bring a partner in. I don't know where you are with that, but first and foremost, the Ace of Cups is that new love for something in your life, especially yourself. When you love yourself, everybody else can love you too. All right, so let's see who else is over here. If anybody wants a card, post again. I think I've lost a few of this. I'd like a card, please. Your BB, oh, your B-Day is coming up on Saturday. All right, hip scientists, happy birthday. Aries energy, you're going to feel it on Saturday for sure. All right, so you drew the the, uh, six of cups. So this card is an interesting card when it comes up because it almost looks the same upside down as reversed, all right? And this is really, this is a great card for your birthday because it reminds us to go back to our roots. As far up as we go, as deep down as we go, it's important to remember that. Sixes are about balances. They're two threes. We come around again, so perfect for what I call solar return, for you to really come back around and honor all that you have in your life, your ancestors, as well as those that are coming before you, behind you, all of that energy, and what is that rooted energy for you. Feel your feet, feel your roots deep into the earth. A really good confirmation of your life, hip scientist. A really good confirmation that, yes, this is coming around. All right, a birthday, another birthday. Okay, let's go, Leah's Pope. I love Instagram, right? All right, another happy Aries birthday. All right, so this one is the eight, the eight of Pentacles. The eight of Pentacles is really a great, a great card because it reminds us that we're weaving a web, we're working in our craft. Pentacles is our work. All right, keep working your craft, keep looking at the details, let it just keep opening up to all of that. It is working. Eight is about abundance. All right, so there's a lot of infinite potential coming your way in all the many things you do. Sometimes when this card comes up too, it's a great reminder to take a step back and look at the light, like shining through your life. Because when we do that with spider webs, like we don't always see them when we look right up front, but when we see the light coming in, they're amazingly beautiful. So as you go about celebrating your birthday, be sure to take that step back and find the light and how it shines all around you. Happy birthday. All right, all right, Mare. All right, Mare, you got the moon. How many times are you going to get this card for you? I love it. I love it. I love it. This is keep practicing your intuition. Keep reading those cards. Keep reading Spirit Daughter. Keep practicing your meditation. Go with the other part of your brain. I know you work in marketing and finance and all that stuff. So be careful to get out of the out of the logic. Move into the moon. Move into the, to the other part of your brain, the intuitive part. Let this guide you, all right? So sometimes that means, especially right now, We have to let go of our old belief systems. We have to let go of the old way of doing things so that we can open up and trust, trust the gut, 
Hashtag trust the gut. All right. And this card will help you to do that, Mar. All right. Great card. All right. All right. You're welcome. Hip scientist. Hey, Millie, how are you? Wow. I'm actually job hunting right now. Excellent, Leah. Yay. Hey, Sid. All right, Millie. Millie, a card for you. Millie's been moving too. Millie's had a lot of changes in her life. Millie, I'm going to be joining you on that. The Chariot. Love this card in this deck especially. I love this card. Look how beautiful this card is. It is so beautiful. Sharing it on both. So horsepower, of course, we think of. But this is a card of direction. This is a card of new path. This is a card of streaming problem. It is definitely a time for you to continue just stepping forward into your world. All right. This new path for you that has come about. With all of this, hopefully I'm back on. I don't know. I am on Instagram, so there we go. So, Millie, this is a great card. Look at the horsepower in your life. It's time to really be firm in that new direction for you, all right? All right, Sin, here's a card for you. It looks like I'm back on. I kind of went off of everything. Cindy, you got the full card. All right, I love this energy because this energy is what is going on right now. This is all about trusting a new step forward for you all right and you and i can relate to this so much i definitely need this card too it's time to just take that leap of faith to pull it all in and take that leap of faith take that next step have the innocence of life i know it looks a little dark down here but look at the colors as they rise up so this always reminds us we have what we need we can take a change in our life and take that next step forward it doesn't have to be a huge step and that's why we learn about them so if you have any interest do come and Learn the cards with me. They're a lot of fun. We learn so much about them. We really do. And you'll get um, a deck is included with the price of the admissions. You can find more about that on my website, Natural Forces Studio, or at Beacon Yoga. All right, everybody. It's going to be an interesting week with the dark of the moon coming in and the end of retrograde moving out. And then that fire, that fire element is coming forward, both for those with the moon and the sun. We always have that on the new moon. Set your intentions. Balance your elements. Remember that just for today. Release the fear. Release the out-of-comfort feeling as you step into a new path for who you are. All right. Take a nice deep inhale. <sighs> and exhale away as you ground your energy. Have a great week. Join me in the Empowered Spirit Circle on Wednesday. Hoping to be in there again doing another Kashyyyk Clearing. Come join me. To your spirit. Namaste.